everybody's doing it. Gwyneth, Courtney, Kate, and Reese, it's the new Hollywood baby boom. The triple threat now in Hollywood is mom, wife, actress. From first time moms to be packing on the pounds. I'm eating almost everything. <laughs> to private parents fending off the paparazzi. She made a deal with the paparazzi. If I show you the baby, will you leave us alone? To veteran mothers laying down the law. Even my children have to clean up their mess. Manners, thank you, please. While some super moms get more than they bargained for. Yes, we're expecting twins. Others take their growing pains in stride. Three boys, that's a lot of work. I think I need to go home and take a nap right now. <laughs> And let's not forget the moms we love to hate. They look so good, you'd think they adopted. Yeah, yeah. I don't act like that at home a lot, but no, I do. <laughs> no, I don't. They're embracing their bellies, whipping back into shape, and celebrating the benefits of mommyhood. It was like Brandy, got milk? Check, 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 check it out. Our favorite hotties are growing up and proving they can have kick-ass careers and be kick-ass moms. I think that's the perfect match. We're not really super moms, we're just moms. Oh, we beg to differ. This is VH1 All Access, Hot Mamas 2004. Gwyneth Paltrow doesn't like to waste time. In a span of five years, the big screen knockout has scored an Oscar, married a rock star, and given birth to a healthy baby daughter named Apple. She suddenly moved over to London, and next thing you know, we heard she was pregnant and getting married like a week later. Talk about your shotgun wedding. In the fall of 2003, Ms. Paltrow discovered she was preggers. But the news didn't stop Gwynnie from practicing yoga and Pilates for a reported 90 minutes a day. But the hardcore health nut did relax her unusually strict diet. Here is this woman who eats, what, twigs. She was on the macrobiotic diet. She couldn't eat meat or dairy or wheat. And suddenly she got pregnant and threw it all out the window, thank heavens, and started eating grilled cheese sandwiches and Chinese takeout and started, you know, behaving like a normal woman who was hungry. The fashion icon started to show by midwinter, but it didn't mean compromising her classic style. Gwyneth Paltrow has such fabulous personal style. It was winter, she was all about yummy, yummy big sweaters and skinny denim. So this would be very typical, this sort of long tunic almost sweater with jeans. In the constant quest to protect their privacy, Gwyneth and hubby Chris opted to have the baby in London against the advice of a super mommy friend. Supposedly Madonna told her not to give birth in London because the hospitals are too old and antiquated, but she did it probably because she wanted some privacy. I wouldn't blame her. Gwyneth pulled through a long, hard labor to deliver a nine-pound baby girl named Apple Blythe Allison Martin on May 13, 2004. <laughs> it wasn't long after Apple's first visit back in New York City that the paparazzi frenzy kicked into high gear. Clearly, there was a lot of interest in seeing her with the baby, and she actually made a deal with the paparazzi. If I show you the baby and let you take a picture of me with the child, will you leave us alone? And so apparently a deal was struck. I guess in the hope that the paparazzi would actually leave them alone to get on with it. Bad chance. But being a famous new mom isn't without its perks. Because Gwyneth is such a big celebrity, she got a ton of gifts. She has a $1,600 Chanel diaper bag. She has the very coveted Bugaboo Frog stroller. And she got about $10,000 worth of baby gifts from Cherry Pie, a very hot designer in LA. Since giving birth, Gwyneth's priorities seem to have shifted away from Hollywood and into motherhood. It was just interesting to find her sort of in this quest looking for the real Gwyneth, her real life, finding her soulmate, finding London. It's really kind of great that at that young an age, you're able to do all that. Goldie Hawn and daughter Kate Hudson have lots in common. They're blonde, they're bubbly, and now they're both totally hot mamas. Kate Hudson is a hot actress right now. She's 25 years old. She's married to Chris Robinson of the Black Crows. Kate and Chris added a new generation to their famous family. 
son, Ryder Russell Robinson, was born via C-section in a Los Angeles hospital on January 7, 2004. Kate Hudson was born to be a mom. She's like Hollywood royalty. As with any royal family, they tend to make their own rules. Goldie Hawn is a grandma, but she says that she's going to have the baby call her Glamma. The 8-pound, 11-ounce rider added a little extra baggage to his normally svelte mama. Oh, I'm eating almost everything. <laughs> the cameras kept clicking for Kate as she put on a whopping 60 pounds during her pregnancy. That belly was sort of a magnet for the giant paparazzi zoom lens. Every time she came out, she was guaranteed coverage in about eight zillion different magazines. Nine months of banana split cravings weren't going to stop Kate from doing her thing fashion-wise. Mrs. Robinson's easygoing style sparked a chill new maternity look for lots of mamas-to-be. Getting pregnant was almost like a new fashion era for Kate Hudson. She was probably the one who inspired the go on ahead and let your belly hang out. She had the big and proud booty belly, you know, sticking out of the crop t-shirt. Even after Ryder's birth, the tabloid's obsession with Kate's waistline continued. How's the baby? How are you feeling? Kate hired a trainer and nutritionist to help her scale from 172 pounds down to a size four in just three months. She did Pilates, she did yoga, she went on an obscene diet where a treat was a tiny weenie fruit shake. My milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. She had her nutritionist make her a smoothie that had two strawberries, five raspberries, four blueberries, and four ounces worth of pineapple. Because she's sexy, let it all hang out, and ate Hagen dazs with reckless abandon, Kate Hudson has successfully become a second-generation hot Hollywood mama. Kate Hudson is a huge star, but for her, career is good, but family is definitely first priority. Kate has said, I just hope that my baby loves me as much as I love my mom, which is kind of sweet. Love your life. She's making movies, making millions, and still manages to make time for her family. Actress Reese Witherspoon has mastered the art of being a Hollywood mom at the tender age of 27. Let's see that beautiful smile, Reese, there you go! She got married to Ryan Felipe pretty young, and I think they wanted to create a sense of family for themselves out in Hollywood. She is a Southern girl, she's had a lot of Southern values, she knew she wanted to be a young mom. Reese Witherspoon is the young, hot, hip mama around town. She had her first child when she was 23, a little girl named Ava. All the good stuff that comes with your career is that much more enjoyable because I have people I love to share it with. Let's go. Four years after giving birth to her daughter, Reese decided Ava Elizabeth needed a playmate and became pregnant with her second baby in early 2003. Reese is a huge star and her career was just going up and up. And then she decided, I'm going to have a baby. And it was no problem. Reese showed off her pregnant glow on the red carpet for the premiere of Legally Blonde 2. She looked very healthy when she was pregnant. She looked good from a guy's point of view. She was like the awesome, healthy, sexy pregnant woman. I worked with Reese when she was doing the press junket for Legally Blonde 2. And she just has the cutest personal style. I mean, I think she's kind of America's sweetheart. Reese's babyfied body proved that being pregnant and looking good on the job weren't polar opposites. Anywhere where there's, you know, modern women in the workplace but still wanting to be glamorous and and girly, I think that's the perfect match. Keep your eyes on my ba -bump -ba -bump -bump. Despite her growing tummy, work never slowed down for Reese. She filmed Vanity Fair in late 2003, several months into her pregnancy. The costumes in Vanity Fair are these beautiful Elizabethan era dresses, and so she's able to hide her belly really well and keep working and finish the film. A few months after wrapping the film, Reese gave birth to son Deacon in LA on October 23, 2003. One more time. It didn't take long for Reese to get back into the groove and get into shape. She did yoga three times a week. She hired a trainer and she was doing running and she was eating very well. A lot of Japanese food, a lot of fresh fruit and vegetables and she's looking amazing now. Reese, right here! She's one sexy southern squeeze, but at the end of the day, Reese is still just mommy to her two tiny tots. 
You always see her in the playground, walking her daughter Ava to school. She's a real hands-on mom. Everywhere I go, they come with me, and whenever my husband travels for films, I go with them. So we're a very close family. She's the total package, really. They say triple threat, sing, dance, and act, but really the triple threat now in Hollywood is mom, wife, actress. Charlie, Denise! Coming up, Denise Richards and hubby Charlie Sheen, born to be parents. They were so excited for the baby. I mean, he was even reading books to the belly before the baby came. And hot mama Rachel Hunter proves if you can't take the heat, stay out of the kitchen. The whole strip on top of the kitchen counter. I don't act like that at home a lot. No, I don't. Plus, Sailor, Seven, Scout? When it comes to naming their kids, some hot mamas can get a little loco. What was so wrong with John and Susan and Kate? Obviously, these people were scarred and decided it was all just a little too boring. Next on VH1 All Access, Hot Mamas 2004. But first, say aloha to actress Helen Hunt's new baby girl, McKenna Lay Gordon, born May 13, 2004 in Beverly Hills. And actress Kate Blanchett welcomed her second son, Roman Robert, into the world on April 23, 2004 in London. Denise Richards has acted alongside husband Charlie Sheen in films and TV shows like Scary Movie 3 and Spin City. Charlie, Denise! One year into their marriage, the couple landed themselves on a new project, one that will last for a lifetime. Charlie Sheen's wife, Denise Richards, wasn't planning to get pregnant, but when she did, she was very happy. They were so excited for the baby and I mean, he was even reading books to the belly before the baby came. I just thought that was so incredible. Pregnant and darn proud of it, Denise flaunted her oversized tummy and some foxy maternity threads. We had this very, very tight, stretchy sequin skirt that she used to pair with a kind of short top that showed like a little sliver of belly. She was really comfortable, sort of showing some skin and being very, very hot mama-ish. Charlie said he thought she looked really sexy with her belly, and she was seen flaunting her belly around at the premieres and that sort of thing. It's that natural look. I think guys like it more than you think. When Denise found out she was going to have a baby girl, she brought out the big guns to babyfy her home. Wendy Bellissimo is the mastermind of nesting, the nursery design bible. I really had a lot of fun working with Denise Richards and Charlie. They both really had an idea of what they wanted for the nursery, and they fell in love actually with the little mermaid embroidery that I had. We took that mermaid embroidery and we actually built a custom crib linen set around that actual mermaid. The crib set really set the tone for the whole nursery. It was just very sweet, very girly, and Denise said it's her favorite room in the house now. On March 9th, 2004, Denise gave birth to daughter Sam one day earlier than her planned C-section. The night before she was due to go in for a cesarean section, she started getting pains and she had the baby that night. So although they had plans, the baby had plans of its own. You are beautiful in every now they have little Sam. So it's really great to see a couple grow and come together. That's one of those Hollywood couples that I just think will last forever. Deborah, cheer up. Sassy redhead Deborah Messing is best known for charming audiences as the quirky straight girl on NBC's Will and Grace. There's just one problem. Gay guys don't tend to get you pregnant. So when this sexy knockout got knocked up by hubby Daniel Zellman in the summer of 2003, Will and Grace producers had to get creative. On Will and Grace, Deborah Messing's character didn't have a pregnancy, so she had to hide it. She had on tons of big coats, and then she would be hiding behind desks. 
but the whole audience knew that Deborah Messing was pregnant in real life, and so it was sort of like a wink, wink, you know. Look up, Deborah. Deborah's thin physique caused concern for the super slim celeb during her difficult pregnancy. She was a size four, and she was too small, and the doctors told her that she needed to gain weight or else she would put the baby in danger. She started out real healthy, you know, she was eating the healthy cereal and the blueberries, and then she started eating pizza, and she was just going nuts in the junk food and trying to eat whatever she could to gain some weight for the baby. Out of control. While the Emmy-winning actress packed on the pounds, she didn't shy away from showing off her newly fertilized figure. I think she started to look sexier as she got more and more pregnant. Deborah Messing on the red carpet with a bump looked amazing. She wore a beautiful Isaac Mizrahi dress. Isaac Mizrahi! And then she showed up at the SAG Awards in a gorgeous emerald green gown. She was definitely a pregnant mom to behold. Perhaps that was just her way of telling everybody, look, I'm okay, you know, the baby's okay, we're okay. Soon after her red carpet appearances, doctors ordered Deborah to stay off her feet and lay low until she delivered. She had to go on bed rest four weeks before she gave birth, and she missed the last four episodes of Will and Grace. The big day arrived one month early on April 7, 2004, at Cedar sinai Hospital in L.A., where she gave birth to baby boy Roman Walker Zellman. Deborah's going to have a nursery on set so little Roman can be just right by her side. And she said that all of those cliches about motherhood are absolutely true, that it just changes your life. This yummy mummy is spotted all over town, showing off her bundle of joy. Being a mom is the final frontier, and you really, your health comes first, and I think she showed us that. And that's a great lesson for everybody to see. I think, you know, our whole country is friends obsessed, you know, and not about our friends, we're obsessed about the friends. Over the last decade, the mega hit show Friends has had some memorable mommy moments like Phoebe's triplets, Ross and Rachel's love child, and Monica and Chandler's adopted twins. <laughs> but the cast's biggest baby stories have gone down off screen. Courtney, David. Courtney Cox Arquette made no secret of her problems trying to conceive with husband David Arquette. Courtney Cox struggled to get pregnant for a while. Compounding that was the fact that Monica, her character on Friends, was also trying to get pregnant. She had a couple of miscarriages and she had some trouble getting pregnant. They finally went through in vitro and that was successful. We had a lot of sympathy for Courtney. We want our friends to have babies. We want them to be happy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Pregnant at last and very happy, Courtney got some practice playing mommy in the Friends big series finale. Nursery designer to the stars, Wendy Bellissimo, was brought aboard to lend a helping hand on the set. It was really special for me to see Monica's babies come home to the bassinet that I had designed. It had the sheer star overlay and it had a sweet little bee inside the bassinet for the baby to focus on. It was really fun because I was getting phone calls from my friends saying, oh my gosh, Monica's baby is in the bassinet that you gave to me. On June 13th, 2004, two days before her big 4-0, Courtney received an early birthday gift, baby daughter Coco Riley Arquette weighing in at six pounds. What better present for her to give birth to her baby girl two days before she turned 40. So, you know, I'm sure they're celebrating with little Coco. Courtney's keeping good company in the Friends Baby Club. Fellow members include Matt LeBlanc and wife Melissa McKnight and veteran mom Lisa Kudrow. But you know what they say, there's always room for more. <laughs> the friends are nesting. You know, they almost weren't supposed to nest. You were watching them on TV and hoped that they'd always be hopeless in love and never get anywhere with their careers and lives. But here they are all settling down. Coming up, Jenny McCarthy's biggest delivery room fear. <laughs> You're about to push a human being from your loins, and the thing that she's worried about is making poo on the table. CNN Soledad O'Brien gets some shocking news. Having twins was kind of a surprise. When they told me, <laughs> could have knocked me over with a feather. And later, Brandy shows off the benefits of childbearing. That was like the poster for motherhood. It was like, Brandy, got milk? It's all coming up on VH1 All Access Hot Mamas 2004. But first, other small screen moms include King of Queens Leah Remini gave birth to daughter Sophia Bella on June 16, 2004 in Los Angeles. And 
Frasier star Jane Leaves welcomed her second child, a son, Finn William, on December 19, 2003, also in Los Angeles. From strolling the catwalk to pushing a stroller. Hey mama, this that beat that make you cool, mama. Runway veterans like Kate, Claudia, Stephanie, and Cindy have all paved the way for a new crop of supermodel moms who are showing just how hot hot mamas can be. Models have amazing figures, but they're not afraid to be moms as well. I mean, they're going straight from the runway to the playground. Victoria's Secret Uber model Heidi Klum flaunted her tummy well into her third trimester. She delivered daughter Lainey on March 4, 2004. Since the biological father was out of the picture, a special friend of Heidi's stepped in to help out. Flavio Briatore was the father of Heidi Klum's child, but when she actually had the baby, it was Seal who came rushing to her side in the hospital. He's been seen around a lot with her strolling around the streets of Manhattan with the baby. Talk about dedication for a child that's not even yours. That's a hell of a man. I think even if she was pregnant with quintuplets, you would have eight people falling all over themselves to help her out. Everything kind of uh, is second now. You know, first my job was you know, the first thing that I would think about in the morning, what do you do next week, what is next month? And now it's all about the baby, which is great. I like a little year change in my life. In true supermodel form, this hot mama hit the treadmill and slimmed back down to size in no time. Now that she's had the baby, she's whipped back into shape in about a month doing workouts with David Kirsch five times a week, and she's on a very, very strict diet. No carbs. No pizza. No pizza. The ultimate payoff was strutting her stuff on the red carpet barely one month after giving birth. I had a great pregnancy. I had a great experience. We had to fit this dress a few times, though, because every week I got a little skinnier. Yoga guru Christy Turlington and filmmaker Ed Burns became the proud parents of daughter Grace on October 25, 2003. Christy's foray into mommyhood prompted a change in her career path. Christy Turlington is one of the biggest supermodels around, but when she got pregnant with baby Grace, she decided to shift her focus to business things. You'll see her in photographic shoots, but not as much modeling as she used to do, because now she's concentrating on her skin line, her yoga wear line. She's still a very beautiful woman, but you know, has managed to create a whole nother life for herself, in addition to being a mom and a wife. I'm a model, you know. 32-year-old actress slash Jones New York model Angie Harmon is walking the baby beat with football star husband Jason Seahorn. Angie gave birth to daughter Finley Faith on October 14, 2003. She's so happy being a mom. She's just over the moon. This child is her life now. But the Law & Order veteran is still in touch with the do's and don'ts of style. The girls with the lowriders and the skin hanging over, it's not good. You know, I mean, I just had a baby, so I'm certainly not going to do it. <laughs> I just love Angie Harmon's sense of style. She really maintained a very clean, classic Texas sensibility. Pro volleyballer and part-time model Gabrielle Reese is sporting a new off-the-court accessory, baby daughter Reese Viola. The little girl was born to Gabrielle and surfer husband Laird Hamilton on October 11, 2003. When a few of Gabrielle's sponsors questioned whether her body could rebound right away, she showed them what it's like to get served by a champ. She actually filed a lawsuit against her sponsors because they claimed that she wouldn't be able to get her body back after pregnancy. She's really into fitness. She's all over the magazines and all over TV doing fitness stuff. And she said, forget it. I can get right back into shape. What are you talking about? Here's a woman, pregnant or not pregnant, looks fantastic. The ultimate model mom has to be Outback Beauty Rachel Hunter, who had two kids with ex-hubby Rod Stewart back in the mid-90s. Since then, this Aussie keeps showing off her body's amazing ability to defy gravity. 
In 2003, she starred in the Fountains of Wayne video, Stacy's Mom. I thought this could be interesting, you know, the whole strip on top of the kitchen counter. It was a really fun, different thing for people to see me in. I don't act like that at home a lot, but <laughs> no, I do. <laughs> no, I don't. It's sort of a take on Fast Times at Ridgemont High. She is in the pool, and her daughter's boyfriend is lusting after his girlfriend's mom. And who wouldn't lust after her? She's hot. They've gone from being pampered to buying them. These supermodel moms prove there's more to them than just another pretty face. Anybody can do anything, and I think these women show you that, you know, yeah, you can still be glamorous and gorgeous and be a model mom. Hey, Jenny McCarthy here. She looks like a pinup and acts like a party girl. But motherhood changed life drastically for this funny bunny. When Playboy centerfold Jenny McCarthy and director husband John Asher had son Evan in May 2002, Jenny went from playmate to play dates. She was huge on MTV, had a sitcom, and you know, a very goofy, funny girl, very cute. And she got pregnant and thought that being pregnant would be cute too. <laughs> Jenny wanted to share her radical transformation with other moms-to-be, so in 2004, she put pen to paper and told the dirty truth about pregnancy. Everybody thought, wow, you know, she bounced back from pregnancy and it was all so happy, but she just wrote a book called Belly Laughs, and really she spills all the details that pregnancy for her wasn't so fun. Jenny pulled no punches when describing the painful details of her difficult pregnancy. She suffered every problem known to women and not known to women. <laughs> From mood swings... <laughs> ...to morning sickness, to her ever-expanding tatas... <laughs> ...you name it, Jenny went through it. Jenny McCarthy's 5'6", she gained 75 pounds about, so that put her somewhere in the 200 pound range, which you know in Hollywood just isn't cute. None of those symptoms held a candle to Jenny's biggest fear. You have a baby, you're going through labor pains, you're about to push a human being from your loins, and the thing that she's worried about is making poo on the table. That's right, folks. When this glamour girl was delivering her number one guy, all she was worrying about was making number two. It's a little naughty. Despite raging hormones, excess baggage, and possible saggage, the ends definitely justified the means. She said that she would do it again because she just adored the outcome, which is a beautiful, beautiful child. And good morning. Welcome, everybody. Some of the news making headlines this morning. Juggling a high-profile career, two daughters under the age of four, and newborn twin sons, CNN anchor Soledad O'Brien gives new meaning to the term working mom. I think in a lot of ways I'm like every other working mom and that you kind of just juggle a lot of stuff trying to get through the day. My day just starts earlier than most people's day. I get up at 345 so I can be in the office by 4. The Latino, Irish, African-American co-host of CNN's American Morning reports the news live every weekday from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. On February 18, 2004, her top story was a bit more personal. Uh, yes, we're expecting twins. Oh. Having twins was kind of a surprise. When they told me, <laughs> could have knocked me over with a feather. <laughs> Together with her husband, Brad Raymond, Soledad started her family in 2000 with the birth of daughter Sophia. Two years later, she welcomed younger sister Cecilia into the world. Are you gonna have some baby brothers? Yeah. Now both girls are ready to roll up their sleeves for midnight feedings. What kinds of things are you gonna do, Soph? What are you gonna help me do? I'll feed them with mommy. I'll give them the bottle with mommy. Y'all gonna make me lose my mind. A few months before her due date, this anchor mom headed down to Soho's hip baby boutique just for tykes to stock up on gear for the twin boys' arrival. Well, doctors tell me they're three and a half pounds a piece, which means time to buy some clothes for these boys. Hey, baby, hey, baby, hey. From trendy booties to mini cargo pants to onesies with an attitude, Soledad had her pick of baby boy basics. 78% crying, 22% almost crying. <laughs> so true. <laughs> 
Not to be forgotten, Soledad's little girls also made out with a set of matching outfits. It's like having twins already. During a pit stop in the toy section, Soledad practiced her playtime skills with a fellow shopper. After browsing for a few more must-haves, this news mama was all shopped out and headed home with a big reality check. Next time you see me, I'll have four kids under four. On August 30th, 2004, Soledad welcomed Charlie and Jackson into her family. And Soledad assumed her super mom title once again. Come on, come on. You can't tell me that Soledad doesn't have a cape under her outfit in the morning. To have such a high powered career and to take care of four kids, she's my hero. You know, more power to her. <laughs> You know, you try to just make it work. We're not really super moms, we're just moms. <laughs> that actually is the definition of a mom. You sit there and you say, what more could you want? What more could you possibly want? Right, yummy tummies? Coming up, the material girl proves she's just your everyday superstar mama. Even my children have to clean up their mess. Manners, thank you, please. Gratitude, being grateful, that has to happen. And Mark Hoppus' wife turns the Blink-182 tour bus into a mobile maternity shop. I just made the front of the tour bus my office. My husband was so patient. I had fabric swatches everywhere. It wasn't really uh, the bus that I'm used to touring in. It was a little different, but it was good. It was cool. Next on VH1 All Access, Hot Mamas 2004. But first, there must be something in the water in Hollywood. It's a girl and a boy for Marsha Gay Harden. Julita D. and Brother Hudson were born April 22, 2004 in New York City. And Gina Davis defied the odds at age 48, giving birth to twin sons Kyan William and Kaya Stephen on May 9, 2004 in Los Angeles. Musical moms everywhere are feeling the need, the need to breed. New moms trading in their love songs for lullabies include songbird Nelly Furtado, soulstress Tony Braxton, and a whole slew of Dixie Chicklets. Everyone seems to be pushing out a baby nowadays. You know, these are people that we grew up with, and it's time to start families. Brandy started her family when she delivered daughter Syrah back on June 16, 2002. The R&B siren knocked off the extra baby weight in record time, but retained two added bonuses. Baby. Did you see her at like one of those award shows in that gold dress? That was like the poster for motherhood. It was like, Brandy, got milk? <laughs> she just looked phenomenal. Men everywhere were like, wow, did you see Brandy last night? Brandy, wow, you can see those from space. Ga, 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 ga. I think a lot of women are probably jealous of Brandy in the sense that she had a baby, then like an hour later, she was skinny again. Spice Girl alum Melanie Brown had daughter Phoenix Key immediately after the group broke up in 1999. Nowadays, the artist formerly known as Scary shines as both single mom and Broadway star in the musical Rent. I think it's all about my word of the day. Balance. <laughs> I don't get to put my little girl to bed every night, but yeah, I'm there in the morning to take her to school, and so there's a compromise that you have to make. She doesn't like to have a nanny, so if she can't be with her daughter, her mom comes and takes care of her or another family member. Be strong within yourself so you can set a good example for them, and if you're a happy mom, then they're going to be a happy child. Yeah, hold tight. <laughs> The ultimate musical mama's stage show may be risque, but Madonna's home life is as traditional as it gets. The material mom is raising daughter Lourdes and son Rocco with lots of emphasis on good old family values. Even my children have to clean up their mess. Manners, thank you, please, whatever. I mean, gratitude, being grateful, that is, that has to happen. Is it traditional? If it's traditional to be a decent human being, then I'm traditional. 
Madonna's really embraced motherhood, but she's also taken it that one step further. I've been writing stories, short stories for a while. Now she's also writing books for children. Mr. Peabody's Apples and The English Rose. Obviously I have children and they're a great inspiration to me. They've been bestsellers and she's really trying to set a good example as a mom. With all of Madonna's proceeds from the books going to children's charities, don't expect any naughty behavior from Mr. Peabody. Moe's changed her writing style just a bit since putting out the sex book. The sex book was about me and saying, hey, look at me. And the uh, children's books were about, um, hopefully, imparting some wisdom to children. She's kind of showing this nurturing side and teaching children things that she wasn't teaching children about 10 years ago. I think I'm being upstaged by my children. There's a lesson in all the children's books, but I think it's really just the idea that even the naughtiest person in the world, big or small, has the capability to do something good in the world. Naughty or nice, these musical moms definitely know how to balance playing guitar with playing make-believe. Hot Mamas of Rock, we salute you. Punk rock and maternity frocks don't seem like a perfect fit. Small things. But in 2002, Sky Hoppus, wife of Blink-182 bassist Mark Hoppus, decided to change all that. I had a really wonderful pregnancy. I loved my body. I loved how I felt. And I just wanted the clothes that I was wearing to reflect all of that. Sky teamed up with friend Suzanne Mitchell and created childish clothing, hip baby gear and maternity threads that rock. Thanks to the clothing line's place of birth, Blink's tour bus. It was where the line was conceived. We were traveling throughout the U.S. I was seeing different trends, and it was great. We had this kind of like road inspiration. There was no room on the bus. There were a lot of people on the bus. There was a lot going on all the time. I just made the front of the tour bus my office. Samples of clothes and doing makeup and uh, design stuff. My husband was so patient. I had fabric swatches everywhere. It wasn't really uh, the bus that I'm used to touring in. It was a little different, but it was good. It was cool. In a nod to Hollywood, these designing women named pieces after today's it celebs, like the Deborah Top, the Reese Skirt, the Courtney Jacket, and the Gwyneth Jeans. We created these jeans just for her. She wore them around town. She was photographed everywhere. And we were just so flattered that she chose to wear our jeans so much. And when it comes to kitty clothes, Childish is turning typical toddlers into punk rock rugrats. There's really nothing like it out there. There are very comfortable, funky clothes that have funky sayings on it that you wouldn't see anywhere else. It's something for the younger moms. It's something for moms that want a little bit more edge with their kids. More and more kids who grew up punk rock and are having children, they're going to want this stuff. They want to look rock and roll. Even the old man is psyched about his wife's new biz, and really, just babies in general. Having kids is a special time, and I, I guess my only advice to other guys who are going through the experience is to enjoy it. What's the best thing that can ever happen in your life? Coming up, Apple, Coco, Banjo. What are these hot mamas thinking? Just having your regular name on the playground, you're gonna get your butt beat. Now think about if you've got some crazy name, you don't stand a chance. Boy. And Tracy Gold finds out the true meaning of growing pains. Three boys, that's a lot of work. I think I need to go home and take a nap right now. <laughs> when VH1 All Access Hot Mamas 2004 returns. But first, for more photos and an inside look at all the latest hot mamas, log on to VH1.com. We're living in a time of crazy baby names. From Sailor Brinkley, to Seven Badoo, to Rumor Glenn, Scout LaRue, and Tallulah Bell Willis, celebrities are notorious for choosing bizarre baby names. Being a Hollywood star gives you a license to do a lot of things. 
including naming your child something completely wacky. What was so wrong with John and Susan and Kate? Obviously, these people were scarred and decided it was all just a little too boring. Gwyneth Paltrow and Chris Martin chose a name that was anything but boring for their newborn baby girl. When Gwyneth gave birth to a daughter, everybody couldn't wait to hear what the name was. And then the name came out. It was Apple Blythe Allison Martin. Not only is that a mouthful, but Apple, her name is a fruit, a little bit strange. Though it sounds like a Swiss Miss concoction, it's rumored that the name of Courtney Cox's baby girl Coco comes from the first two letters of Courtney's first and last names. Hot Coco, mmm. <laughs> Hot Coco Arquette. I like that. I don't expect any different from a baby of David Arquette. This is a man that still wears hammer pants. For some celebs, choosing a name is all about location, location, location. Helen Hunt named her daughter McKenna Lay after a town in Maui. Phoenix is Melanie Brown's kid. Summer Phoenix figured, I gotta keep the geography thing alive and named her kid Indiana. The Beckhams named their child Brooklyn. I believe that was where the baby was conceived. As far as I can tell, they were throwing darts at a board and hitting cities. Maybe Tony Braxton was hoping for an endorsement deal when she named her children. Tony, Tony, Tony has done it again. Oh, Tony, Tony, Tony. Diesel and denim? Baby, come on. If you wear jeans, you don't name your children after them. Six Feet Under actress Rachel Griffiths went bluegrass while naming her baby boy. Rachel Griffiths named her son Banjo Patrick. I mean, an instrument? You can't even imagine that kid in the schoolyard is going to hear the deliverance tune everywhere he goes. Apparently for famous folks, years of playground torture is a small price to pay for their kid to have a truly unique name. Just having your regular name on the playground, you're going to get your butt beat. Now think about if you've got some crazy name, you don't stand a chance. I don't think so. <laughs> Actress Tracy Gold spent seven years as Carol Seaver on the hit show Growing Pains. Nowadays, Tracy and husband Robbie Marshall are parents to a gaggle of little boys. Sage is my oldest, and he is seven. He was born in 1997. Sage Gold Marshall. Bailey, he's five, and he was born in 1999. Bailey Vincent Marshall. Tracy became pregnant again in 2003, and girls just weren't in the picture. When I found out I was having my third boy, I think it was like, of course, I knew it. I knew it. I had a feeling, and my husband looked at me and goes, I think I need to go home and take a nap right now. Because <laughs> they didn't know. Three boys, that's a lot of work. Boy. Son number three, Aiden Michael, was born on May 8, 2004. I always wanted a big family. I'm the oldest of five girls, so for me, it doesn't feel like a home unless it's loud and noisy. <coughs> Ten weeks after Aiden's birth, Tracy and the boys decided to shop for some baby couture at Fred Siegel in L.A. All the Hollywood moms love Fred Siegel because they have a line called Life Size. You name it, they have the cutest, adorable stuff. Check them out now. Tracy tapped into decades of shopping experience to sort through all the trendy mini fashions. I've learned as the years have gone on, like what boys wear, because I had no experience in this. Check it out now. Oh, I love it. At seven and five, Sage and Bailey have their own ideas about the perfect wardrobe. It's a little funky, but it's a little Western style. Is it you? No, it's not, not you. Me. Not me. Sage likes to dress like his dad. Like, he teases me, you know, like, I dress him like, you know, like, everything in my mind has to match. And he's like, Mom, I'm a boy. I don't need to match. I like this. If Sage, his older brother, says, like, it's cool, Bailey will wear it. <laughs> so Sage sort of sets the trend. He also looks out for baby brother Aiden when it comes time to pick out what's cool. Oh, this is so cute. Aiden will love it. So what do we think? Do we have a good time? <laughs> Yeah. Well on the way to starting her own football team, Tracy is just happy hanging out with the guys. I have these three beautiful little boys and a husband I love and, you know, a really great life and a great family. And it's, it's kind of how I imagined it. <laughs>
Between keeping their careers buzzing, their hubbies happy, their babies cooing, and their bodies buff, these ladies prove once and for all that they are bona fide grade A hot mamas.